So, I'm back for another video, and today we're looking at this bad boy. Yes. So, in a previous video, I showed all the various cameras I have installed and stuff. And I showed a really broken PTZ in that video. Well, it, it's not broken, it works, but it's analogue and it's controlled up the coax wire so it stops working in the winter. Which is fine because you still get a video but you just can't control it. So, I wanted to upgrade to a Hike Vision IP PTZ for a while, but they're very expensive. Until you go on eBay and you find one for £65 that has an unknown fault, does not power on. Well, I'm pretty sure the problem with this is actually in the Ethernet connector. But the pins are corroded basically. Pins... Pins 1 and 2 by the looks of it. Or pin 7 and 8 if you look at it from the actual connector. But it'd be pin 1 and 2 on the RJ45 connector. But it'd be pins 1 and 2 on the RJ45. I don't actually know how that's happened. But hey, it takes 12 volts in. And this particular model is the... Oh, it's the DS2DE4220IW-D. Part on the end is important. Dash D. Um, that means uh, what does dash D mean? Dash D means DC powered. So there you go, 12 volts. There is also DE, which has DC and Ethernet powered, and I assume there's also other combinations like AE, which is AC and PoE. This is um, just a D model though. Um, I don't think these were very popular, obviously, because at the time, this was 2016 this model was made. Why would anyone buy the non-PoE version when you've got a Hike Vision MVR with 16 PoE ports on it? This wasn't a hugely popular camera, which is why there's pretty much no info on it. So I thought I'd make a video because, yeah. Now... This one does power up despite what the eBay seller said. You put 12 volts in, and the network cable, despite being corroded, it does actually seem to work. It's just a bit iffy because two of the pins are actually broken in there. But we're only doing 10 100, so it's possible that I can make it work without them two pins because it's only pins 1 and 2 or 7 and 8, depending on which way you look at it. So, yeah. Looking around the camera, there's not really much of interest. The one thing I have noticed though, is this plastic piece here has gone yellow. You might or may or may not be able to see that on the camera. And the bubble, not bubble, the um, paint has kind of bubbled up here. And looking at this, it seems to be a bit corroded here. So I'm, I'm starting to think if maybe this was installed in like, a seafront or something, somewhere with high silt content. That would explain the corroded connectors, the fact that it's gone yellow, the paint's bubbled up and stuff. It's a bit of a shame really that this camera has had such a hard life. But hey, I'm going to give it a nice life. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take the back of this off and show you the insides because no one else does that on the internet. No one else even makes videos on this stuff. So here we are on the inside. So there's a few important things to note in here. There's an SD card slot here, micro SD. I do have a 32 gig card on order. I always put an SD card in these cameras when I install them. It just makes sense. Why not put an SD card in there? You can get them for next to nothing. I think I paid eight quid for a SanDisk like high endurance video surveillance card. Why not? And if you really want to go extreme, you can buy the Hike Vision branded cards. I've used one of them before, but they're a bit more pricey, and I don't know if they're any better. I think they're probably just rebranded SanDisks. We do have a reset button. This is important, I had to use this because obviously this was installed before and yeah, there would have been it would have been useless if I didn't have that reset button. 
So there is a reset button, despite the manual never, ever, 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 ever mentioning the fact that it has a reset button. I mean, I can't even find an installation manual for this particular camera. Hike vision, really, you need to standardise on one manual. <laughs> you've got a manual for like end users, and you've got a manual for installers, and I can't find that installer manual anywhere. You seem to have one generic one for every PTZ, but of course that means you miss out things like there's a reset button in this model that's a that's a selling point for me I wouldn't really buy a hike vision camera without a reset button these days we do have a blower fan in here a little blower fan at the bottom which runs all the time although there is a secret menu option to either disable it I don't know why you'd want to do that or you can like have it automatically turn on and off um, Apart from that, there's not really much else we can see in here. Nice, simple setup inside. I don't know if there's a heater in here or not. There may be. There may not be. Personally, I don't think this really needs a heater. It gets pretty warm in operation. But, yeah. I like that. And the bottom cover that it came off does have captive screws on it, which is a nice feature. I have forgotten which way I came off though. I don't think it really matters. See? Just goes on. Four Phillips screws. They are captive as well, as long as you don't take them out all the way. Although I probably wouldn't want to do this up a ladder. So it's time we actually powered this thing up. I'm using the uh, tried and tested bin method of uh, testing PTZ cameras because, yeah, I don't really have any other way to power this thing or well, keep it upright and power it. So let's see if we get any life out of it today. See if I've broken it. Bit of a scrapage on the bin lid there, but we're fine. It's fine, everything's fine. So you can actually hear the audible fan now, at least I can. So that means that we're now ready to pan, tilt and zoom. So I have the joystick here, the Heinkvision DS1005KI, just for reference and we can see we can move this camera around. We can zoom it in, zoom it out. And it's a pretty good PTZ. It can do a one of them, one of them. Except normally it doesn't scrape on the bin lid. I haven't installed this bin lid correctly, uh, according to proper code, you know. Mm. But it's fine. Other than the scraping, I forgot the sacred rule of the DS1005KI which is to never touch the number buttons when you're hooked up to a DVR. They do not control presets. I don't know why I would have thought they would control presets but uh, yeah. It's a working pan tilt zoom camera. 
so I will try and upload some like videos from the actual camera camera and I'm really glad that I got it for such a cheap price now I am trying to light it a bit better here it's really hard to film black objects it turns out um, I will be doing a follow-up video because this is going to be installed fairly soon actually I've bought the brackets I've bought some cabling I've bought another 12 volt power supply because the current PTZ is 24 volts AC it's a real shame this can't do 24 volts AC, that would have been a nice simple transition, but no, this is um, 12 volts DC only, no power over Ethernet, so that's a shame, but um, yeah, it's worth it for the 2 megapixel, 20 times optical zoom image this provides, it's honestly probably the best image I've ever seen from a camera. I mean, you can zoom right, right in to objects and I can see cobweb with this thing. It's, it's mental. Yeah. This thing is definitely worth every penny it should cost normally. The latest model of this is about £310, I think, in the UK. So they, these aren't cheap, but they're worth it.